got that blessed assurance, preacher, that he's right there waiting for me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, if you've got that blessed assurance tonight, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This one's in G, children. source of strength when I am weak that takes me through when life is pressing me I have a source of power from above I'm covered on that good i'm telling you what there ain't nothing no greater than to watch a saint of god who's just been uh, faithful all these years and uh i'm i'm grateful I, I believe we ought to honor our heroes don't you amen i believe you ought to have heroes uh these kind right here is getting i'm talking about i'm talking about it's a dying breed right here and i'm praying some young people to get a hold of what they got a hold of and uh, i appreciate i appreciate uh, Miss Lowell and Brother Charles, and thank thank God for uh, their faithfulness down through the years, and and uh, what an encouragement they've been to us. All right, take your copy of the Word of God, and uh, I told you this morning kind of felt like a Mark chapter ten Sunday, so go back to Mark chapter number ten tonight, and uh, we'll uh, I'll give you the thought the Lord's laid upon my heart. I'll try to be real brief tonight, and uh, I know we got a lot a lot of work to do. Um, but you know better than to think that you're going to come and get out of preaching, praise God. So, uh, so we're going to, we made your own preaching around here, so you know we're going to have. Uh, you ain't going to get out of here without getting some preaching, praise God. And uh, I was listening, I was listening on the way home. I like going back and listening to these old men of God. And I was listening, 
And uh, old, old preacher man said he was preaching this, and this is back in the 80s. And, and uh, he was preaching. He said, he said this, this generation now, they'll drive 500 miles and, and, uh, to listen to a group sing, but won't drive 10 miles to listen to a good man of God preach. Yeah. Amen, friend. That was in the 80s. Now here we are living in this day and hour, and I'm talking about uh, it's, it's hard to find folk drive to hear singing, but you'll still get that crowd. They'll, they'll, they'll travel across the country to hear good singing. And, uh, but I'm, I'm telling you, friend, I like good singing. We need it. Uh, the book of Psalms, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, a song will help you. You need to. Uh, you need to lift one another up, sing them good songs. I like, I like, I like songs, and I like to hear them good songs about the blood and blessed assurance and all those things. But and and a song will help you, friend. You need to learn a song, get to where you uh, have a song in your heart. But there's just no substitute for preaching. And uh, we can't do without preaching. So Mark chapter number 10, when you find your place, if you're willing and able, I want to ask you to stand and we'll honor the reading of the Word of God, Mark chapter number 10. We started at the end of the chapter. We're working in reverse this the, today. I want you to back up to verse number 13, Mark chapter number 10 and verse number 13 this evening. Mark chapter number 10 and verse number 13. If you're there and you're with me this evening, would you let it know by saying Amen. amen. The Bible says, and they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. You ever read something before and just start scratching your head thinking, what? Surely that ain't right. But that's what it says, his disciples. Not somebody else's, but his disciples. These are, these are men that were following the Lord. Men who knew him, men that was closest to him. Yet they are the ones that rebuke those that brought these young children unto him. Verse number 14, but when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased. And he said unto them, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and the Bible says he blessed them. I want to preach. Everybody knows we're fixing to go into Bible school. We're fixing to have a bunch of rug rats running everywhere around here this week. But I want to preach tonight for just a few moments on this thought. Jesus loves the little children. And so should we. Jesus loves the little children, and so should we. Father, I pray you bless now the, uh, the preaching time. Lord, I pray you do through me what I don't have the ability to do within myself. Give me an unction to preach with. Give me a fresh touch and a fresh anointing. Lord, thank you for uh, the good spirit in this place tonight. Thank you, God, for the good, uh, the good singing we've got to hear. And uh, God, just to gather together in that with these thy people, Lord, and, and, and just uh, uh, encourage one another, help one another, uh, worship with each other, God. Uh, uh, surely iron sharpeneth iron and God I'm grateful for it but I pray as we open the word of God Lord do what only thou can do prick every heart in the building and God I pray for this week upcoming Lord as I pray that we as a church could be a help and a blessing uh, to some young folk and, and maybe uh, maybe some young people this evening or this week uh, would come and be forever changed eternally changed um, as a result in that of the gospel of Jesus Christ we love you we praise you and thank you ahead of time for what you're about to do. It's in Jesus' high and holy name we do humbly pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much for standing and you can be seated this evening. I found some statistics and I want to give them to you real quick and, and I'll give you my thought and get out in the way, but uh, I, I want to read these to you and, and, and this is a while back and so I'm, I'm sure that it could be even larger uh, in this day, but... Uh, did you know that only 15%, 15%, now this is pre-COVID, so I'm sure it's a lot higher nowadays, but 15% uh, of Americans 30 years of age and under attend church. Only 15%. And, and again, this is pre-COVID, so I know uh, since COVID, there's a lot of people that was in church and they never came back. A lot of them was looking for a reason to get out of church. 
they got used to it. A lot of churches, they last time they've had, last time some churches have had a Sunday night service was prior to COVID. Amen. 15% of Americans 30 years of age and under attend church on a regular basis. And then also 5% of Americans 18 years and under attend church on a regular basis. That's a small number, would you not agree? And I'm sure that that percentage is a, even a lot smaller in this day. Here's what I want you to understand. That means then that the majority of young people in our country today, the majority of young people in our world today are growing up and they are living their life outside of the influence of the church of the living God. And there's kids growing up nowadays that they don't, they don't sit on the Bible preaching every week. There's young people growing up nowadays that, that's not being raised in the house of God. They don't know what a pastor is. They don't know, amen, they don't, they don't have a Sunday school teacher. They've got a ball coach, but they ain't got no Sunday school teacher. Amen, I wish somebody help me preach now. Uh, young people growing up, and they know very little of the things of God. I mean, they never get to say it and see a saint of God. I get up and, and brag on the Lord and see the, the genuineness and the pureness and that uh, of just walking with God and, and fellowship shipping with the Lord and, and knowing the power in that of his resurrection. A lot of young people are growing up and they never get to experience that. And, and I've preached in places and I've told you this before, I've preached in churches. I've, I've been called to come preach some meetings and I'll, I'll show up and the youngest person in there is about 60 years of age. Now here's the thing, if we don't get serious about reaching another generation for the cause of Christ. It ain't gonna take very long, friend. You think it's getting, you think it's getting low in numbers in this day. You give it 10 more years and, and not winning some young people to the Lord and you'll see, friend, what an empty church house looks like. Now, there has to be a burden and, 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 and I love, uh, you know, it's a two-way street. I appreciate, I appreciate that older generation that's walked with the Lord. Here's what I appreciate about a, a saint of God is a saint of God who's right with God ain't got no issue of passing down everything they have with the Lord down to somebody else. I like seeing older folk that'll get up around a young person and take them under the wing and try to teach them a little something. Amen. We need some, we need some folk that will invest in some young people to teach them the realness, friend, because I'm telling you, we're living in a day and hour where our young people's getting bombarded with all this nonsense out here. I'm talking about all this contemporary movement and all this, all this garbage, and, and that's what they've hear and that's what they think. Uh, no, walking with God and worshiping the Lord is all about, and they know very little in that of the realness and genuineness of old time Holy Ghost filled. Amen, friend. I'm talking about. I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. They don't know nothing about the old time religion. Amen. And you say, well, well what you bragging on old time religion? Is that, you know, is that making, is that, hey, that's the Bible way. <laughs> Amen. And so here in our text, we see, and you know, we preached out this chapter this morning, but you know Jesus, he's approaching Jerusalem, he's going to the cross, and along the way we find, as they're en route to Jerusalem, we see here in verse number 13 that there were those that began to bring young children unto him. They were bringing little children unto him and the Bible says that the Lord would take them up in his arms. He touched them and he blessed them. Two things I want you to get from the text tonight. And we'll be done. Two things we can learn from it. Number one is Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves the little children. And number two, if you and I love the little children, then we'll take them to Jesus. Jesus loves the little children, and if you and I love the little children, then we will take them unto Jesus. 
I got a problem with these mom and daddies nowadays want to talk about how much they love their kids and love their children, but yet they never take them to the house of God and they never teach them the things of God and they never they never read the Bible to them. They never, amen, they never get them under the preach word of God. I want you to look up in here, mom and daddy. If you ain't got a burden to see your kids in the house of God, around the things of God, learning the word of God, then you really don't love them, friends. Amen. Because if you really love the little children, if you really cared for them, if you really had a love for them, you would want them to know the truth. You would want them to know uh, the, the reality as to where they stand before. I mean, how in the world, and it ain't just little children, I just want to go say, if you don't love your neighbor, amen. Uh, but how can you love somebody and not care if they die lost and go to hell? So if you and I love the little children, you know what we'll do? We'll take them to Jesus too. Why, preacher? Because Jesus loves the little children. And so here they are, they've gathered around, and we see that they're bringing these young children unto the Lord. And notice what your Bible says in verse number 13, and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. His disciples. You ever read things and, and it just bothers you, stuns you? As a pastor, it, it, and, and you other men of God, you'll testify to it, but it won't take you long being in the ministry. You're going to get shaken to the core. You're going to get stunned. You're going to get surprised by people. Amen. I mean, I, I know what it's like to hear the news of somebody doing something or acting a certain way who I know identifies with the Lord, and, but their actions don't match, and, 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 and it just shocks you. And when you hear the news, you, you scratch your head, you say, you sure it was them? They said that? They did that? They went there? Are you sure? Here his disciples rebuke them. You know what I'm reminded when I read a text like this? Here's what I'm reminded of tonight. I'm reminded that anybody, anybody, no matter who you are, can get out of order every now and then. Ain't nobody above sin. These men, these disciples, they really believed they were doing a good thing. They really believed they were being a benefit to the Lord, that they were doing right, but in reality they were doing wrong. Can I say this to you tonight? Just because you're saved, that does not exempt you from doing wrong. Just because you're in the house of God, just because you're faithful, just because you, you've been born again and, and you identify with the Lord, that does not exempt you from doing wrong. And you can do wrong all the while thinking you're doing right. They're rebuking them for bringing these little children to the Lord. Can I say this to you this evening? There are still those in the church today. Amen. Preaching time now. There are still those in the church today who frown on a bunch of little kids running around the house of God. I know it'd get caught right there. I'm glad. I'm, brother, I'm glad my friend showed up tonight. Amen. They still frown on it. I don't know how many times I've been around the house of God and, and heard things like this. Well, they're just, uh, they're just too mean. <laughs> you think they was mean? <laughs> you should have seen your preacher when he was a boy. Huh? Don't make me get my mama down here. She'll testify to it. I spent more time on the porch than I did in the sanctuary. Getting a whooping. Brother Marty knows. He'll testify to it. Being mean, well, they just a just bunch of little mean, them kids are mean, them kids are mean. Or what about this? How many's ever heard this one? They just so rowdy, just so rowdy. Well, what you want them to be like? I like rowdy kids, praise God. I, I mean, hey, friend, that's my crowd right there. I mean, I, I, want, I want a little racket every now and then. I want some noise. I want, you know what, you know what the greatest evidence to life is? That's sound. A dead man never says anything. 
That's why I like some kids around the house of God because it gives evidence that there's at least a little bit of life. Huh? Some, some folk won't give you a holy grunt nowadays. Praise God. You say, what do you do, preacher? Go get you a bunch of kids and bring them to church. And, and man, they'll make some racket for you. Preach on. They're too rowdy. What about this? They're messy. Kids are messy. <laughs> They're just messy. And I believe mine are the messiest of all kids. My wife, she, she'll clean the house, and in 37 seconds, it's just like nothing ever happened. <laughs> it's back to like Tasmanian devil to run through there. Amen. I told her the other day, I said, one of these days, we're going to get to have a clean house and a clean vehicle, and ain't nothing going to be, I mean, you know, we're going to fix something, and then, uh, you know, it'll stay fixed. You know what I mean? I mean, ain't no big things tore up, and some of you older ones, you're already shaking your head because you're like, no, you ain't, because by then you're going to have grandkids, and they really going to tear it up. <laughs> yeah, they messy, they rowdy. They're mean. Here they are trying to stop them from coming to the Lord. There is still a crowd that will try to stop young folk from coming to the house of God. Can I say this to you? The best thing that a young person can do is come to the house of God and hear the word of God and the message of God and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, friend. That's the greatest thing that could ever happen in a young person's life is they get under the truth, amen, and hear the truth. Hey, because listen, where else they're going, the schools ain't going to tell them the truth. The government ain't going to tell them the truth. Amen. The news ain't going to tell them the truth. If they're going to hear the truth about where they came from and where they're going and the only thing that's going to make the difference in their life, the only place they're going to hear that is at the house of God. And so hey friend bring them on. Bring them on. Amen. Get all of them that you can to the house of God and don't dare ever rebuke a young person from coming to the Lord. They're rebuking him. I will say I pray to God that Freedom Baptist Church never becomes a part of that crowd that stands in the way of young children coming to him. And, and it's easy to do so because they were doing it and thought they were doing a good job. Thought they were handling things. Don't bother. How many times you read throughout the word of God and they'll talk about, well, don't bother the master. You know? Amen. Amen. Let them come, let them come. Bring them unto Jesus. Notice Jesus' response. I'll give you this and I'll be done. Notice his response. Here they are. They're bringing these young children unto him uh, that he should touch them and his disciples. They rebuked those that brought him. But notice what Jesus says in verse 14. When he saw it, he was much displeased. It is a displeasing thing to the Savior if you stand in the way or become a hindrance, amen, rebuking somebody and hindering somebody, that's just as much damage. Amen. You say, well, I didn't tell them not to come. Yeah, but you didn't encourage them either. These young people try to do something for God, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, and I've seen it before, and it ain't just young people. It's, it's, it's all kind of people who, who maybe not, uh, they don't know the Lord like you know the Lord, may show up to the house of God, and instead of being a help and an encouragement, a lot of times folk will end up being a hindrance to them, and they never come back. That's just the same as rebuking them. And the fact of the matter is you stood in the way, and it was displeasing unto the Lord. Don't hinder them. Don't rebuke him. He was displeased. And he said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such, watch this now, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein I told, I, told, I told the girls back there I said I, I, I was pointing Miss Lola out and I said you need to get to know her you need to, you need to, you need to get to know her and, and she'll be a help to you and encouragement and I appreciate it. But but do you understand just as much as the young people need to learn from the older ones can I say this us older ones got a lot to learn from the young ones 
Isn't that what he says? He says, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Watch this, for of such is the kingdom of God. Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as not an older one, not one who's walking with God, not one who's worshiping the Lord, but notice, if, if they don't receive as a little child, he shall not enter therein. There's much we can learn from a child tonight. How many would agree tonight? Yes, children are messy. Yes, they're rowdy. Yes, they're, they're wild. Amen. Uh, they're all of those things, but how many would also testify tonight that children are honest? Huh? Yeah. If there's ever been such thing as too honest, you're going to find it in a child because children don't care. They don't understand. They just All they know is just to tell it like it is. Amen. I mean, they, they won't, they won't, they just, they won't hold back. It don't, it don't matter. You know, we try to be all, you know, learn how to act, learn how to say what to say. Children don't do it. I mean, they just, they just blurt it out. It is what it is. I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're just honest, too honest sometimes. They tell it like it is. Can I say this to you tonight, though? Now, we joke about it, we laugh about it, but may I, may I remind you tonight? One thing we can learn from children tonight is you'll not come to the Lord unless you get honest first. Amen. And there's no such thing as being too honest with God. You cannot come to God and not be honest. You can't come to God and you can't, you can't, you can't have a relationship with the Lord and you can't get uh, in a in fellowship with God unless you first get honest with yourself. And you got to get honest with your sin. Amen. Uh, you, hey, and I don't know why you don't want to get honest because he already knows about it anyways. I ain't never figured that out. Why a lot of people struggle to get honest before the Lord as if God don't know where you been last night and as if God don't know what you've been thinking about today. And if God didn't know... Uh, what, what you did and what you said and all that. Hey, he knows it all, friend. And so the best thing you can do is go ahead and get honest, praise God. He said, as a little child, children are honest. I'll tell you something else about a child. Not only are they honest, but I love this. They're humble. How many would agree children are humble? They're humble in the sense that they don't know not to be humble. I mean, I mean, you can give a child, you can give a child a very expensive gift. And they'll have, and I found this out to be the case, they'll have just as much fun with the box that it came in that they do with a gift. Huh? They're humble. I, here's something else I like about I like about you. They'll talk to everybody. Now, I mean, kids will fuss and fight a little bit, but they, 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 they'll always come around. It's like they don't, I, I don't think they know how to hold a grudge. I mean, you, bring, you watch this week as all these little kids come in here, and you watch all them little ones. Now, them teenagers, that's a different ballgame, all right? They're getting to that point. They're too cool. they too, you know, they're in their little, they're, they, you know, they, 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 they backbite and go on nowadays, and they've learned to lie a little bit, and they've learned to be too cool and all that. But you watch them little ones. They'll talk to everybody. They won't be a child. I mean, I mean my, my little girl, she'll talk to anybody. You let, a, you let a little, another little kid come in here, and she's going to talk to them. They're going to talk to one another. Why? They're humble. They don't know that they're, you know, they ain't, they ain't got infected yet by the, by the ideology that they are better than somebody else. Amen. That's them teenagers. But them little ones, they don't know that. They're humble. I say this to you tonight, if you're going to walk with God and you're going to be right with God and you're going to come uh, to the Lord and to the kingdom of God, you ain't going to see the kingdom of God until you first get honest and then you better get humble. Amen. I'm talking about when you line up uh, to, the, uh, to the word of God and, and the person of God, uh, it ought to humble you, friend. Uh, you ought to be humbled. I tell you what, uh, do us some good in this day and hour. We become a very proud generation. I mean, it's all about me, myself, and I. 
what, what, what's in it for me? What have I done? What of this and that? I tell you what will do us all some good tonight is to be reminded what we really deserve and we ought to all be in hell tonight with our backs broke. But for the grace of God. Amen. But for the grace of God. Here we are in a good Bible believing church. Got the word of God in our lap. Heaven on our mind. The Holy Ghost living on the inside. I'm telling you friend, we ought not ever get to the place where we're too proud to remember where we came from. A child is humble and it do us some good to get some humbleness about us. Amen. They're honest. They're humble. I'll tell you something else you can find out about a little child is they're pure. They're pure. You know what I love about what we got to be blessed with tonight? Because that was pure. That was pure. Something about that pureness. Genuine. You know what the Lord's looking for? He's looking for people that are real. Not these people that know how to wear a suit and tie and a dress down to their ankles to come to the house of God and say all the right things and got all the Sunday school answers and all this, that, and another and got a King James Bible up under their arm and everything's going good, you know, and they support missions and, and oh yeah, they got the looks and all that stuff. He ain't looking for that. <laughs> Not that that ain't some evidence of what's going on on the inside, but what he's looking for is somebody who genuinely loves him. They're not doing it for a show. They're not doing it for attention. They're doing it because they love him. They love him. They're humble, they're genuine. They're like a little child. Amen. And I think it'd be all right if we got a little rowdy every now and then too. Why we is that? If we're going to be like your head man, friend, we ought to get a little rowdy every day. I believe there ought to be a little noise going on around the house of God as a little child. They rebuked him, and Jesus was displeased with it. This week, you're going to have your patience tested. Especially some of your older ones. I enjoy Bible school because I get some of you older ones, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all sit back there and y'all wonder sometimes, why can't them kids be quiet? You know, and you see these mamas and daddies rolling in and they're about two minutes late and you're thinking, Lord gosh, they can't even get to church on time and all this stuff. And then by Friday of Bible school week, you're, <laughs> you're ready to even just not even show up because you wore out and you're like, oh, I see now, I see. Been a long time, you forgot about it. But whatever we ought to do, we ought to get them little kids to the house of God. Teach them the things of God. And God help us to not be a hindrance or ever stand in the way of little children coming to the Lord. Because Jesus loves the little children. And we ought to too. And if we do love them, then we will get them to Jesus. Father, thank you for the word of God tonight. Lord, I appreciate the truth. God, I pray, Lord, that you would move throughout this place and God, speak to hearts. I pray there'd be some mamas and daddies and grandmas and grandpas. And I pray there'd be just some folk that, that are here. Maybe they don't have children, but Lord, those that are uh, members of Freedom Baptist Church, I pray, God, that they would get a love and a, and a burden for young people. God, may we seize the opportunity that is before us this week as Many young people is going to be coming through here. I pray we'd be a help to them, a blessing. May we love them enough to teach them the truth. As some having compassion, making a difference. I pray we'd be difference makers in the lives of some young people. And may we never get to the place where we rebuke or hinder someone coming and that to the Lord. Lord, I love you. I pray if there's one here tonight that is not saved, I pray they'd come get saved before it's everlasting too late. We bless your name. We honor you. We glorify you. It's in Jesus' high and holy name we do humbly pray.